Hello and welcome to this pre-recorded video here, instructional video. We're going to be working with the pre-printed vintage uh, paper. It's not really even cardstock. It's just a pre-printed uh, vintage antiqued looking paper. I have a quarter piece here. It comes, I don't know, when I see these papers, they, they for the most part come in um, eight and a half by 11. I guess scrapbooking there's probably some you know heavy duty cardstock versions of it in 12 by 12 and maybe 8 by 8 but most of the versions i see um, online are these just i don't know like a you know text weight um multi-packs all right, well, so we're going to keep this very simple in terms of our um, applications of both stamps and media. But when I do that, I really want to try to introduce a, an elegance to, to the piece um, that um, will kind of overcome the really super uh, simplistic application of media on it. And... Um, you know, I, I think that lends itself to a very nice, elegant look. And I think that's the uh, the strength of um, really kind of simple um, pieces. You want to make them look as elegant as possible. All right, so I'm using um, a Brilliance Black. You can use um, any kind of dark pad. I would go with a, a black that's going to be pretty dark, you know, like a Versifying Claire or something like that would be good on this. Um, it's a very absorbent paper, so if you, you, can, you can try, um, you know, your favorite black dye-based ink, or you can try a Stazon. Those are thinner styles of ink, so they'll absorb into the paper more than... Um, you know, a thicker pigment style, but um, I don't know, you might get good results from it, or it might look even more aged from having kind of a more faded looking, uh, you know, impression. I don't know, test different things out. Uh, on this paper, um, this one's double-sided, so you can stamp something on one side, and if you don't like it, you can always stamp on the other side, because, you know, this is so thin, we're going to be mounting this anyway, so... Um, you know, no big deal. You know, if you get something that you don't like, just flip it over and use the back side of it. All right, so uh, we have our main um, covered bridge here and um, I'm stamping some leaves overhanging over the top of it because we really need to close off that composition up there, even though on this particular paper, it was darker on the top and that has a, you know, tendency of closing things off very nicely anyway. But with this, what we have is an element that's closer to us. So we've kind of expanded on the range of uh, imagery within the piece and thus increasing oh, like a scenic depth, all right? Okay, now what I was talking about here in this piece was uh, adding in a little bit of um, interesting elegance. So I'm gonna try some of the uh, gold pen in here. I'm gonna do a little bit of highlighting Let's see, let's do a little bit of shading too. I have a brown colored pencil. I have a beige paint pen on a white paint pen here and gold. I'm not sure if I can use gold on here or not. We'll give it a try. Okay, so right in here, do you see how this covered bridge is a little bit darker on this side uh, than it is on the front side? But you can see underneath these eaves, there's that little bit of darkness. What I'm doing is I'm just going to reiterate that little element of darkness. I'm using a colored pencil because I can really adjust uh, my pressure where I'm using a much lighter pressure to get a very light application of this media or medium. And see that, you know, it just kind of changes the, uh, oh, kind of the illusion of uh, three-dimensional um, objects. All right, so see that? It's just a little, and it also makes it a little bit lighter on the top of that um, in terms of appearance. Let's stay with this brown here and let's darken in some of these trees. When I say darken in, I'm, I don't have like a high degree of pressure on this pencil. I'm just using a very light touch 
And if I want it to go darker, then I'll use um, more pressure, or I'll just layer over the top of it a little bit more. But see, going a little bit darker in the background makes this bridge stand out from the background even more so. The more, you know, because you, you're playing contrast against one another, you want this bridge to really stand out, then you make those trees a lot darker, or, you know, color them with some other color if you want to. For this one, I'm just going for that kind of aged, um, kind of, I don't know, not really a sepia print, but kind of that antique looking, uh, sepia toned, influenced. Um, look. Right here, here's this road coming out this way. And right on the side of the road, I've kind of differentiated it from the bushes and grass area with a little bit of darkness. So I'm just going in there and reiterating that. So it makes this road stand out a little bit more. See how I've darkened in this area right here? You don't have to be perfect. Um, this isn't like a paved road or anything like that, so, you know, um, the differentiation between kind of the side of the road and the road itself, you know, there's a wide um, tolerance to it. See, I'm even bringing some of this brown into the road. You add some of this up into the trees and the shadow areas of your trees to make them look a little bit more dimensional. And let's go into this with a little bit of a tan color, okay? Now you can use a white pen if you want to, but I tend to think that this kind of little bit of a, a beige color is really perfect for this. This comes in a, uh, the Artistro set. I'll put links to everything that I use in the uh, description section when I get around to it. But uh, it's really nice having a range of tones. And I'm adding some of this to these rocks in here, the tops of the rocks. And see how it really kind of stands out. And there's some little rocks on this road that are lighter on the top. And I'm just kind of adding a little bit of a highlight to them. See this fence in here? It doesn't really stand out, does it? So you can just kind of go in there and just bring out that fence like that. So you just kind of redraw it like that. And then I like doing this on the top of the uh, rooftop here. I think that's really fun. You can try colored pencils up there too, like a lighter colored pencil, but you see how that kind of brings out that rooftop a little bit. And on our trees, you can put a few highlights like so, or on the bushes. There's these darker areas on the trees. And that's where I added the brown, okay? Just to reiterate the, the shading. And now there are lighter areas on the trees. So I'm just going into that lighter area and adding a few highlights like this. And that kind of makes them stand out a little bit more three-dimensional now. Okay. All right, so this one's good friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know they're always there. So with this paper right here, it was kind of darker up top there like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and add in just by hand some of these little extra stars. Maybe I can do like a little Milky Way or something like that. I'll come down here like a little bit of a S curve. Make some of your stars a little bit larger than others. Especially down here in the, the lighter um, area, you know, where this pen isn't really going to stand out by contrast very much. A few more highlights down here. All right, let's go with our gold because I'm going to be mounting this on a piece of gold uh, cardstock. So I'm adding in these little golden kind of elements into the uh, piece. So we'll have a little bit of shimmer uh, within 
the same. I'm going to add some of these onto my trees as well. Make it kind of a little bit more twinkly, I guess, and glisteny. You don't really... I don't think someone would really see these golden elements. Unless you're kind of tilting it around and it's uh, catching the light a little bit. But that's one of those things that's kind of extra fun for someone. You give this someone a card and if they're kind of looking close to it or if it, they hold it at a certain angle um, and that gold kind of reflects back at them, it's kind of nice. So see there's all golden elements in there like that. So especially up in the sky when it's a little bit lighter like that, but seeing this right down here in the trees too. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of focus here, but you can see that little glistening gold in there. All right, so we have our stars in here. All right, now I should learn my lesson here. I should probably add, you know, these little um, Uh, crystal rhinestones before I do that uh, um, other you know the surrounding stars just because it's easier to see them okay let's go for I won't go too big here but um, let's go with uh, kind of the second to lar smallest star here or I don't know larger than small I guess and add these little stars into the mix. <laughs> I can't see where my which one of these is glue here. Maybe maybe I did I just do four little dots of glue, or did I do more? I thought I did one more. Well, no matter. I will add it in uh, myself or. Additionally, like that. All right, so you get these little blingy little elements like that that are really fun to do. All right, we'll get this formatted and we'll take a look and see what this card looks like. Um, formatted on a nice little card, but what are we at? We're at 12 minutes, 12 and a half minutes right now. So not too bad in terms of kind of the time spent. And I think a pretty nice looking piece. All right, we've got this formatted in a little combination that I like. I had a lot of, uh, like a ream of beige um, tone paper. And that's a little bit of a strip around that. I used a 3M Super 77 um, sealant, but you can just use your, um, you know, your tape runners or something like that. I tend to like the uh, the 3M, especially with this type of paper that's so thin, you know, it can get a little bit floppy, um, sometimes not initially, but over the years. So if you get a can of that, um, I don't know, you can do like a hundred of these cards with it, if not more. And a piece of gold foil on the outside, like I said, to just, you know, kind of bring out that little bling. I was looking at this under a, a different lamp, and that little gold throughout here really stands. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, see it right there, kind of glisten a little bit. But you can see it up here in the stars as stars. But especially all those little um, kind of, you know, uh, crystal rhinestones like that. So a little bit of twinkle to it. It brings a little bit of movement to the scene. And again, I mean, this is an aged paper, so what we're doing is we're kind of playing contrast against them with a really bright, kind of exciting, you know, um, reflective foil. I have a little crystal on my hand here. But I think they complement each other pretty well, you know, and something very modern looking against something aged. I think it brings it into kind of a contemporary looking um, end result and very fast so i don't know so about 14 15 minutes on this card um to complete it you know it's something that's uh easy to do especially with this pre-printed background on there we don't have to really do any um you know toning in of the background at all for atmosphere and i don't know kind of the feel of the piece because that's already been established here so it's just a matter of what you want to do with it 
Um, things like this little bit of tone on the side of the mill. You know what I mean? I think that's really fast and quick and easy to do and takes like a minute to do. Uh, if you're doing it, remember just to kind of lightly apply your colored pencils or if you want to do something, if you have like different values of kind of a warm tone, light in value um, alcohol links, maybe use some of that. You know, you can just color it right in. Keep it really subtle and then um, as you need to, um, go darker and darker if you want to, and uh, I think that'll add in a nice um, kind of element in the scene. All right, the colored pencils tend to give a little bit more texture, but you know, you can use one or the other or both if you want to do a little bit experimenting on this type of paper, and I think you'll get some really good um, results that will serve you well. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.